We present Sam Lana of Winterton. Up jumped the air in the king of the sea, said he to the skipper, look under your lee, sinking windy old weather boys, stormy old weather boys, when the wind blow, we'll all go together. <laughs> and Ronnie Balls of Yarmouth in Singing the Fishing, a tribute to the fishing communities of East Anglia and of the Murray Firth, whose livelihood has been the herring. If you fish for the herring, they rule your life. They swim at night. You've got to be out there at night waiting for them to swim. With our nets and gear we're faring. Because it's a wonder too, you see. You pick one of these little fish up and it's vibrant with life. Like that. On the wild and wasteful ocean. The numbers, you realise that there's only one of millions and millions and millions. When the little people swim up properly, they really do it. It's there on the deep that we harvest and reap our bread. There's no lazy man when hearing about it. As we hunt the bonny shoals of heron. When you're doing well and catching fish, they talk to them all the time. Come on, spin up, my darlings, come on. And they absolutely cajole them into the nets. And wherever the heron are, the fishermen will go after them. You might be working 200 miles from Aberdeen on the Norwegian deep water or off shields. If the heron are there, that you have to go and get them. Come all you gallant fishermen that plough the stormy sea The whole year round on the fishing grounds Of the northern minch and the Norway deeps On the banks and knolls and the north sea halls Where the herring shows are found It's there you'll find the Norfolk boys and lads from Peterhead. There's Bucky Chills and men from Shields on the northern minch and the Norway deeps on the banks and knolls of the North Sea holes where the herring shows are found. From Fraserborough and Aberdeen, from Whitby, Yarmouth town, the fleet's away at the break of day to the Norman Minch and the Norway deeps, to the banks and knolls and the North Sea holes where the herring shoals are found. Once I went to the fishing, you know, it took a sort of hold of me. When we came ashore to try another job, some of the sea always took you back. There was about 370 or 8 men and boys in this village, fishermen, out of this village. When we left school, there was sea or jail or us. I left school when I was 12 years old. Felt right a big man. <laughs> yes, I did, and went to sign on to go to sea in the office. When I got home, my mother said, how do you get on, boy? I said, I signed on. We're going to sea tomorrow. It's up with the dawn, with your sea boots on, and down to the Yarmouth Cay. Kevin wore a little boat called the Young John, 1892. To fish Smith's Snow. Little sailboat, about four tons. Where the big seas roll. You know, there's a dread. That's not what people say, and they don't have that dread, because they do when they pass go to sea. You have that feeling. You, you, you never went light-hearted, and when the tug got on you and pulled you out the pairs, when she began to lift, you began to... Think about Mother at home, then. Boy! Find your sea legs. Oh, there! Steady! Stow your gear up there in front in the smallest bunk, boy. Little place. You'd have to turn yourself around in it. Ready? 
Check your stores and stop your cabin. In you go to the cabin. Hello there, old Sam. Come on, come and light your fire. Put the old kettle on. There's a crew of ten old fishermen and you're the boy. Boy? You're a galley slave in everyone's employ. Come here. They're a hungry lot. Keep an eye on the pot and see you keep your stove in order. Hey, if you have to look round, go on there. Would I in the pan when up the chimney? That's what you get. Now get washed up and start again. This hunger has no end. We used to live on dumplings. Peel them spots and scrub the table. Come on there, Sam, you young and able. Night and morning, tired and yawning, out of the bunk and make your fire with the sleep still in your eyes. Norfolk dumplings, Norfolk swimmers, we call them at sea. Don't know how many I used to make when I was at sea. Thirty. They'd eat the lot. Yeah, fill you up for your dumplings so you didn't want the meat. <laughs> Probably Norfolk Bee. That was a prop, Norfolk Bee. Norfolk swimmers. <laughs> Cause they they come up light when you took the lid off there, the old like little loaves of bread all along there. Now we're away with the wind astern, so I can watch, boy, watch and learn. We're outward bound for the Norfolk grounds. When you're coming in the harbour, you have to please, heart up. But when you're going out to sea again, out of the yard, you're on the knuckle buns of your ass. <laughs> there ain't no time for you to stand and stare. <laughs> you have a job to do. You're in the way, boy, there. That's right. You've got to put your time in Sam with the old slop bucket and the frying pan, the scrubbing brush and the mop and pail before you call yourself a man. Then you can say that you're a fisherman. The poor little boy is all to everyone's call, you know. Boy, where are you got to? Go to this, go there, go and get me this. That's how a boy is all to everyone's call. Do this, do that, come here, go there. You've got to well to earn your share. Down you go in the rope room now and coil that line. You're the first one on down, you're the cook. You've got to coil the rope with the caps and even on up the nets, you see. Because you've got about a mile and a half of rope to coil, you know. Down the rope room, where well, that was a rope now, too. We were boxed in, <laughs> coiling there all alone down there, the little boy. And there's all that space round you, coil the ropes right close round you like that. Boy, you're right dizzy. You've got to coil it tidy, coil it neat. Round and round and round and round your feet Hour after hour A great big rope as thick as your fist It coils and twists, it twists and turns As they haul the nets They drill you You had to coil them so you trickle marbles on And the rope drips water down your neck As the rope winch feeds it from the deck And the big you blisters hurt your hands And make them burn Oh, poor old time. And the biting cold has numbed your feet And you feel you'll die if you don't get sleep out after hour Very poor. So the nets are in and the rope is coiled And stowed away And the crew all troop off down below And the cry is heard Boy! Cook him! Dish up! Years ago, you started very young And you put through the ropes rough you know, rough and ready, you were put through the ropes. They were rough old boys, boy. You know, rough, they were rough at you. My uncle, he used to, he was the one who used to, my uncle Jimmy used to flog me, and he used to cry after he'd done it. He used to cry after he'd flog me, he used to cry. Oh, it was a fine and a pleasant day Out of Yarmouth Harbour I was faring as a cabin boy on a sailing lugger Or to go and haunt the shores of Heron Oh, the work was hard and the hours were long And the treatment surely took some bearing there was little kindness and the kicks were many As we hunted for the shells of Heron The real old bulldog breed they were, they didn't care for nothing Neither God nor man they didn't, they didn't, that's the truth 
They were wicked old men. Now and again you'd find a kind old man with some of them or whatever. Cruel. You want a low to speak, and they'd take and gear with loose in, and boy, they'd look at you, put the rope on your backside if you're in the trouble. Oh, we fished the sword and the broken bank. I was cook and I had a quarter share in. And I used to sleep standing on me feet And I'd dream about the shoals of Heron And you know what? Sometimes I've been sleepy And they'd throw a bucket of water on tea and wake you up Wake up, you young beggar And they'd chuck a bucket of water on you make a shake your feathers that wake you up Oh, we left the home grounds in the month of June And to canny shields we soon was barren With a hundred crying of the silver darlings That we'd taken from the shoals of Heron Way we went to shields, I was looking on deck and seeing the shields pair, I'd see them a-coming Oh, that fair funny going at the Shields Pair. Strange and excited to see different fairs of life, you see. I'd never been away from home before, away from home. And we went to South Shields that night, little boys. We went across the ferry and went over to South Shields. I was like these other boys. And I forget what theatre went, but i tell you what was on. The Wages of Sin. In the last act, the hero came in, and then he said, The Wages of Sin is death, and he shot him. He shot him in the last act. In 1896, I thought, I had enough of this cooking business. I'm going to take a hand in the snowflake. And so I've been cooked four years before I got my bath as a deck hand. Now you're up on deck, you're a fisherman You can swear and show a manly bearing Take your turn on watch with the other fellas While you're searching for the shoals of Heron Oh, sailing over the doggy bank, wasn't it a treat? The wind a blowing about east north east, so we had to give our sheet. You ought to see us rally the wind a blowing free. A passage from the doggy bank to Great Grimsby. I started to go to sea in eighteen ninety two, and the young John, the John Frederick, Gemini. Failure, Snowdrop, well, what's her name? Well, Snowflake, that's Snowflake, then Breadwinner. Oh, I earned me keep and I paid me way. I done eight year in sailing boats and then we were fully qualified then. We could do anything there was to do about sailing boats. Not splice, mend the nets, set a rigging in. Sava Regan. And I earned the gear that I was wearing. The more you sailed a boat and done things about a boat, the more enlightenment you got. Sailed a million miles, caught ten million fishes. We were sailing after shoals of hair. They're suffering human about a sailing boat. How they answer. And they talk to them. Go on, old girl, you'll do this. She'll do it. They talk to ships just as they were talking to human beings. But as the guards of work, that was like heaven when we got into the drifters, the steam drifters. Absolutely like heaven. Ah, the steam drifter. The loveliest ship for the job that ever was built. I went in the lot, eh? That was the first steam drifter I went in. In October 1899, and that was the first start of the Good Fishings, 1899. (laughs) 
so it's off with your boiler full of steam and your engine spick and span to fish the grounds, the North Sea round and fish, fish the nose on the North Sea holes and try your luck at the North Sea it's got with a catch of a hundred grand. That period from 1900 to 1914 must have been a bonanza, must have been a gold rush. No need to wait for wind and tide, you're the masters of the sea. Come, come, a squall, just shoot and haul and, and fill the hold with the fish to be sold and steam ahead for the curing shed and the buyers on Yarmouth Key. But first you've got to find your fish and spot your herring shoal For as long as they're still in the sea you'll never get them sold So watch the diving gannet boys and notice what he gets and if you see the whale fish blow, it's time to shoot your nets. With your toodle laddie, whack the laddie, toodle The gulls and the blowers used to tell us, the blowfish. Sperm whales they are, they come and they'll tell you where the fish are. And I've seen the big whales where they blow the smoke right away, great old biggins. And they'll tell you where the heron are. And when you've shot your nets, my lads, you wait for time to pass And keep one eye upon the clock and the other on the glass For the sea is wide and deep and the wind may blow a certain gale And take your ship and gear and leave no one to tell the tale Will you to laddie, whack the laddie, to the The sea is lovely, but you can't push it around. The sea, the sea, they talk about the cruel sea, the sea isn't cruel. The sea is a natural element. If the wind blows a certain force in a certain direction, there'll be a certain type of sea. If the wind shifts, there'll be a cross sea. If you go over a shoal where there's a hell of a tide rip and a gale of wind, you'll probably swamp your ship and lose her. But that's not the sea's fault, it's your fault. And that's true enough. Because when you're in a gale of wind and those biggins come roaring at you, you can't get out on them. You can't get away out on them, you've got to face it. You know there's death there if one of them gets you. The sea is a thing that doesn't change, you see. A fundamental like the climate or mountains or things like that, you see, you can't change the sea. So you take your lovely machines and ships and gear to sea, but you still got to use them subject to what the sea will let you do. You see it when it's lovely to be out there, you see it when it's flat and calm, and, and then you'll see it with just a little air ripple on it, and you'll see it when there's mountains of boiling water. When the sea grows dark And the glass is low and falling Quick rise after low Indicate the stronger blow When your nets are stretched out there Two miles or more Winds south to southwest Force four to six Gradually veering northwest and increasing to four seven tomorrow afternoon. When the breeze is freshening to a gale and climbing up the Beaufort scale and the wind is screaming. Your mind's not on the market, then the buying and the selling men and the market prices. We went in this boat and that came on a gale of wind. That came down the Saturday night. And that blew for three or four days a living gale and we were in these little boats. They had a good breeze when we finished hauling. And when he dished out the six o'clock weather forecast, we had then got it very bad where we were in the North Sea. And we'd be somewhere about 50 miles from Lowestoft when that struck us. First of all, she, she broke the side windows in the wheelhouse. I eased the ship in and head up to wind. And dodged her time we patched these side windows up. I mean, she took a tremendous sea, and I shall never forget that sea as long as I live. Five pound eight now, five eight, I'm at ten at five pound, ten at five ten now. 
Open five, open five. Start to blow the ships alive. Wait along, running high. Some white horses passing by. Oh, for six, oh, for six. Now the wind is playing tricks. Bigger waves, tops of foam. Flying spray aloft is blown. Well, now it's six fourteen. Six pound fourteen, now it's sixteen. Six pound sixteen, now eighteen. Six pound eighteen. Gale for seven, gale for seven. Now it's blowing like the devil. Broken waves pile up in heaps. Foaming tops are blown in streaks. Gale for eight, gale for eight. Getting rough to navigate each higher, longer wave top boils into burning spin drift coil. Six pound two, I'm at four, at some four, at some pound four, now it's six. Seven pound at six, now you're up. Eight now. Seven pound eight, now ten. Gale for nine, gale for nine. Fighting for the nets and lines. Water black and white and grey. Now the air is full of spray. Gale for ten with a one foot scale. Now it blows a living gale. Force eleven, force eleven. Close your eyes and pray to heaven. Deal on the white point, 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 deal on the white point. If you dodge and those great seas are coming, now and again they'd peel you know, and break, and once they break, look out. So I stood in the wheelhouse law of the skipper. I was there the whole blessed night, me and the skipper. The chaps down below are crying. They wore these young chaps, you know. Well, once she shipped the sea, I said, Ted, look out. I said, there's one going to get us. They that come roaring along. I bet you our boots stayed on our hand like that. I bet she stood up like that. You just couldn't see the ship. All you could see was the mast sticking out of the water on her. I, I thought the ship was going to find her under that night. And I think if I'd lost my nerve, I'd lost my ship. I realised that if we kept dodging the ship with the weight of fish we had in her, she just wouldn't lift to the swell, you see. Everything was coming down on top of her. Sea and sky without division, world of water, world in turmoil, shock of wave and scream of wind. The small boat is lost and the mizzen boom gone. The beer is abandoned, the ropes and the nets. The radio silent, out of action. Put her head to the wind. Watch it, dodge it. She near went under. You've got to wait for it. Now tack around a bit. She's riding in the truck, so keep your fingers crossed. She's riding high, she's up again, and now she's standing on her head. You see that she is taking leaves a shuddering and shaking Every wave is like a fist and you can feel a dodging twist Listen to the bloody racket, keep a head up, mate, and tack it, hold the wind After she took a heavy sea, I could see nothing but one boiling mass of water Like looking up perhaps at uh, 45 angle degrees at these heavy boiling seas are coming down I said to the mate, look here, Alf. I said if we don't swing your girl around, we say we've got to lose her so I said, we've got to take the bull by the horn, I said, and take the risk of running with the wind on a quarter. Will she hold out? Will she make it? Can she keep afloat and take it? Will she make it? Will she do it? Can the skipper bring her through it? Can, Can she, she live it? in all this waste of water? We had a terrible job. We steamed her up five hours at half speed, and uh, we fetched in at 25 fathom. We, we tacked the ship in. We tacked her in northwest again, then up south and by west again, run the fort again, and tacked her up, dodged her up again northwest until we fetched lost her. And that took us 36 hours to get in. What shall it profit a fisherman to gain a catch and lose his span in the salt sea water? To win a crown at every pull If his heart has stopped and his lungs are full Of the salt sea water I had two goals at that and that frightened me Then I went again, you see Though I was frightened, I tell you Dreaded when we went to sea the next time And then they'd gradually be like, oh, why don't you forget it? Just same miners, I suppose the miners just the same. Down the mine when they have a disaster. Of course, really, you can't live with the dead, can you? Come on, leave off this yawning, lads, for talk won't pay your debts. There's a good green sea for herring, and it's time to shoot your nets. It's time to stand there in the hole and throw more the lee. 
And keep your mizzen sail up, boys, so she can hit the sea. Will ya toodle laddie, whack the laddie, toodle doodle Busky hero! Come on, boy, out of that shoot, old busky, busky! The heron lay on the bottom in the daylight and rise just before the close, just before dark. Come on, come out of that, boy! Well, then is the time when they go up to net depths to put your nets down into them. You shoot a two-mile string of nets and you let them hang in the water like a spider's web, if you like, and waiting for the heron to swim into the meshes, you see. If the heron don't swim in, you don't get any. And when they heave the pole in that over and you start to shoot the nets, they all say, heave nets in the name of the Lord. And Jesus said, shoot your nets on the right side of the ship when they got the big multitude in the gallery, didn't they? So take it nice and steady, boys, and start to earn your pay. And mind that you don't shoot too soon and scare the fish away. Your sail ropes are in order, your cork lines, buffs and all. Here's hoping that this good night's work will fetch a bumper haul. With your tooraladi, whack the laddie, tooraladi. It's always that. What we got to get, you see, you, you chuck a net into the water, you can't see it, you pull her out again. Here they are, look. Spin up, lovely, bonny hand. It's busky, me lads, get you up on the deck And take up your stations for hauling the nets And mind you pull together, boys, all through the night And sweat in your oil skins until it's daylight As the heaving and hauling and shaking the nets Pull together, the boys Shut up it's when we start hauling, we're living in hopes They're buying the locker, the lads on the ropes And the fellas in the hold who are pulling the nets And shaking the heron out onto the dead With the heaving and hauling and shaking the nets There's nothing more sightly, I don't think, or stately Than a shoal of heron coming over the side it's net after net is pulled up from the sea With a haul and a shake and the one, two and three And the hair and on a piling around your sea boots And slithering and sliding down into the shoe And we're heaving and hauling and shaking the net <laughs> There's nothing can beat it Oh, that lovely hair. Yes, you see, lovely. when the net is coming over there, it's like a white sheet of silver. Yeah, what a gather boots. There'll be five, perhaps six oh, blokes all in the hole. Oh. Out draw, you see. In yeah. she comes. Everything kicking. Up. Push. And they're all up. Out they all come. Well, the net is black. You see, all the gather boys, now you get a fresh grip. In come another one. Push. Now, them nets are 35 yards long. And if you'd see that, you'd see that. There's no teamwork to beat it. And the fact that the heron are there, you see, money. Yeah. Spin up, my little darling. Good. Throw the weight up there. Lovely. It's hour after hour, we are hauling our way All through the long night till the dawn of the day The skipper's in the wheelhouse, he's on the RT And the cook's in the galley, a brew in the tea And we are finished with hauling and shaking the nets There's no feeling like coming into a harbour with a good catch of fish there's no feeling like it, especially if you're in a boat like we used to be with a good crew. You'd come up to the quay and you'd tie up, now there's everyone come, you see. Hundred grand, go a lovely shot. Get your sample out, let's be selling them, you see, and you just lean back in the wheelhouse and you look. All I can think of is, you know, if you was one of the old hunters in the old tribal day, you know, you brought home a the meat, you see, share it out, do what you like with it, you see, I've done my bit.
this season is over so be on your way and head for the home port and sign for your pay your missus is waiting to welcome you home it's hard for a wife to be so much alone I don't like coming home you know it's lovely so forget all the hauling and shaking of nets there's the old yellow waiting boy oh Used to count the days. I was like getting fresh married again when you'd been away about ten or dozen weeks. Reunited again, and just as strong as ever. Well, you know, you were hungry. <laughs> when you got down to the North Sea and had plenty of fish down on you, you got hungry when you got home, didn't you? <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> 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 Lovely. They must have had a fabulous time from 1900 up to the first war because they built 1800 drifters practically. That's nearly a hundred puts a year. I've seen me and walk across the arms harbour, jammed right full up, right chock and block, and boots right full up. Aaron ain't nowhere to put the hand on the key. That's when the drifters first came. That's when that was good. You've never seen anything like it in your life. Every year there was more boots. Every year they wanted more hair, and they used to cure them millions of barrels. And the girls used to come from all the Scotch places where they lived to do the gutting. There'd be hundreds and hundreds of them. You'd see them walking along the arm of the key in great lines, arm in arm, singing away, and lovely bonny red faces, you know, the real kind of Scotch girls. <laughs> That's why you meet that a lot. Yeah, my I just came up to Hodges to see her, and then he asked her out for a while, Quill. That was the first thought. That's the last thought, you see. Come, my special lassies, I have come away with me. Fi Karen Bogan gave me, and Fi Jan Varala here. Fi Bucky and Fi Everdeen, and now they come to run. We don't want to go to hell, and we don't want to go to hell. <laughs> Rise up in the morning with your bundles in your hand. Be at the station early or you'll surely hate to stand. Got plenty to eat and a kettle for your tea. Or you'll maybe die of hunger on the way to Yarmouth Key. It's just like a holiday when you can to Yarmouth because you've no housework today, you see. You've no cooking today. The journey, it's a long one, and it takes a day or two. And when you reach your lodging, sure, it's soon asleep you'll fall. But you rise at five with the sleep cell in your ear. You know what to find the gutting yards along the Yarmouth Key. It's early in the morning, and it's late until the night. Your hands are cut and chop it, and they look and not the sack. But you greet like a wing when you put them in the ring, and you wish you were a thousand miles away from Yarmouth Key. Oh, I've seen the hands. I have the marks of my hands yet to holes. The rough salt breaks your skin. Then a pickle gets in. Then it festers. I've seen me in Yarmouth. Afraid to put my fingers in, my hands in them, in a pickle in the brain in the morning. We're at sore, just nipping. But after you get used to them again, they just, well, this pickle just cures them again. There's coopers there and curers there and buyers can it chills And lasses at the pickle and another's at the creel And you'll wish the fish had been all left in the sea By the time you're finished got an hair and on the Yarmouth Key Oh, it was a hard life. It, you was fisher, bread and boarding. It made all the difference that now. Being fisher, I would do it all over again. We've got it fish and lyric and in stone away and shields. Worked along the humber amongst the bottles and the creels. With be grims, we was traveled up and down. But the place to see the heron is a key at Yarmouth Toon. 
in them days, you see. That was on the crest of the wave. Must have been a golden time. But we don't know anything about that. Our generation just missed that, you see. We come in for the low when the market is gone. You see, I went, first went to sea in 1918, now I went younger in the Crown. I got £100 from the Shields fishing and 190 from the Yarmouth fishing. And after that, that was never the same again. The next year was, I can't remember what I earned, but it was very low. And, uh, of course, it never did come better. The year after that, I went whaleman in the Premier to the Shetlands. Hell of a poor sum of that. We caught plenty of and we couldn't sell them. 21, I went mate in the Golden Spray. Now, that was the worst fishing ever was known at Yarmouth, 1921. There was no heron, terrible scarcity of fish, as well as poor markets and everything else, you see. That, that was the year they, they said they paid the men off with the stamp cards. Up jumped the heron, the king of the sea, and he sang out, old skipper, now you can't sell me. A glut. That's the worry when you've got my board, what they're going to make. Up jumped the heron, the king of the show, and he cried, you do better to be on the dole in this windy old weather. The Winton chap, now, they took the house he lived in. He lost every penny. Up jumped the heron, all broken and spent. And he cried, drifting's finished, so who'll pay the rent in this windy old weather, stormy old weather? From 1924 to 30 were struggling years, but they weren't the deadly bitter years that came after 1930. Up jumped the heron right under a leaf And he cried, skipper, dump me right back in the sea In this windy old weather, stormy old weather When the fleet scrapped, we'll all rot together The lovely shining silver fish To me they were at the wholesome dish The Lucifer's a shooting star, we fishermen Hunt you near and far. In the wild Atlantic or in the channel swell, we do our best to ring your knell. But even in our greatest moment, we respect and fear you in quick and torment. We the hunters, you the hunted. Our wealth is by your numbers counted. And should your numbers prove too many, our wealth, well, there isn't any. Ships no longer needed, world of glut and world of hunger, world of scrap and rusting gear. 1929, when the grass was growing in the ship building yards. The markets are lost and the cure is gone. The gear is abandoned, the ropes and the nets. The buyers are silent, out of action. Fishermen, try again. Catch them, dump them, we'll all go under. The train in the fishing was just absolute despair, just ruin. bad years. They were the bad years. I seen butts had to go to sea and dump big catches. Just off Claremont Pier, dumping fish, after eight or nine hours hauling them. Come in and the butts are lined all around the market, sometimes two and three deep in them days, and you couldn't sell them. Very poor. No market. 
to say. After 1930, you really could not get a living if your neighbours got one. What you had to do, you had to go to sea and catch some fish when nobody else had any. Then you got a price. What sort of an economy do you call that? Dog eat dog. This sort of thing was far worse along the Murray Firth with the Scotch people. They built up their their homes and, and fortunes on herring, and now the herring trade suddenly collapsed. You see. I used to think there was there was as much, if not more, poverty along the Murray Firth, Banff, Bucky, Fraserborough, Peterhead, where all the drifters belonged, to, while they were dying out. You see, absolutely sort of starved out of existence. Don't want that time to come back again. When you see fisher folk, do you know think shame? The young to the butcher for a thrapne bin. If you get Sunday put by, you're no muckle caring. Ah, the week run, you get tatties and heron. Tatties and heron. Tatties and heron. We buck and tatties and Peter heed the depression of the herring fishing way back in the 30s. I remember once leaving home and going to Ireland, been cranning fishing there for a good few weeks. Came home, started at Fraserburgh in the home port, continued right up until the end of August and finished up with five pounds. Refitted and went to Yarmouth, came home and got five pennies. From the month of April until the end of November, I got five pounds and five pennies for my labour share at the herring fishing. The little faded flower that in summer time did bloom, but when the autumn winds were blown, oh, who fast it tore them down. They remind us we are strangers, and this world is near him. But we seek a better country, we the Saviour there to reign. I sold a drifter to Holland for £65. Fully equipped drifter. My anchors and chain were worth more than that £65. That was in 1937. Two years later, the government would have paid me that a month for hiring her. Of course, since the war, there's a big change, just the opposite. Before the war, we had a great big fleet of boats and no market. Now we've got a small fleet and a good market. <laughs> 
In fact, the people ashore can get enough iron. Mind you, there's been a lot of technical developments. What with diesel coming in, echometers, and the radar for position finding, direction finding, all that kind of thing. But the echometers are the thing for catching iron. The Scotsmen are mustered on that. Well, the Scots people, you see, they're spending more and more time on the west coast. They're steaming about all night, and as soon as they mark the heron, pretty boys, over they go, you see. Which is a new kind of drifting altogether. Going through the Suna Mall here and, and, and out past Tober Moray. By the time we get doing it, we'll get the forecast and see whether it's going to be worth going across to the coastal base side or we'll maybe have to go north. I think this is a beautiful country, especially the north of Scotland. You see more of the handiwork of God down here than you see in the flood country. It's wonderful God's creation. Wonderful. Kawaii hair and fish are men that work the nets, the hill you run. With a tenor seal to the northern minch to fish the western herring group. We have easel engine, nylon nets, RT and echo sound as set to the crew of ten. And sweat through the water, fish for the heron. Oh. We're racing through the Sunda Mall when our folks are in their beds. Tyree and Call are left behind, we'll shoot our nets off our heads. We are diesel engine, nylon nets, RT and echo sound are set by the crew of ten to toil and sweat through the water, fish for the heron. Oh. Nowadays, when you go to sea, Looking for her and he wander. He didn't uh, take a set course. Once he get out and he get the news of what he's doing and he sort of have your scouts and he call up, get the information from them, just make a beeline. Oh, I'll have a look around with you, Frank. I'll take a look around with you. Right there, we go. Where the hell are you? We know all the voices belong to different boats. Just work in direction, find them, get the bearings of where they are from you, the people that are among the fish. Old nature's a back number, new we dinna, we done gulls are whales. Poor echo cinders on the job, and seldom is it that it fails. We don't depend on the whales so much nowadays, you see. Once we see the whales, if we get our echo sounder going to, to locate the shoals. The echo meters revolutionised fishing. Well, it's like if you're playing blind man's buff, that's lifting up the handkerchief, isn't it? You can see what you're doing. We have diesel engine, nylon, that's our tea, and echo sounder set to the crew of ten to Sweat for the water, fish for the heron, oh. When we were young, when we come home from Yarmouth, we would have uh, stayed home usually from, from the end of November up till about February before we went back to fishing. But now, now it's developed since the war into just one continual rush. The men are driven backwards and forwards to the west coast pretty much like cattle. And uh, they're on the boats about 50 weeks a year. A market will no wait for God, and neither will it wait for men. It's get your fish up on the key and turn and put to sea again. We are diesel engine, nylon nets, our tea, and echo sound are set, and a crew of ten to toil and sweat with a water fish for the hair and go. Aboard a ship, you know, the older men talking about the, the fishing in their days. I mean, say, the younger fellows turn down to say, there's only six months to see and all this. Now it's a 12-month job. I mean, they're tied up the whole winter, they never went to sea. You're chasing here, you're chasing there, you're keep it at it night and day. I when you fish the heron, man, you've got to sweat to earn your pay. 
starts about at 26, or maybe even at 30 or 36. But at the age of 50 and 60, and even older, they're still going there. And at that age, it's ridiculous. The work's too heavy. We're gone to where the herons swim, and east and west, it's just the same. You're lucky if in two or three weeks you get a day to buy it at home. It doesn't matter how good the boat is, it's not like home, you know. Oh. What's you living ten men in a boat? You subordinate your feelings to those of the crew. For us at home, you get back to your individual self and your wife and family. The way we work, there's no home life at all. If we go home for a weekend, every second weekend. It takes about six hours to go from here to Fraserborough. Well, it's just a rush around the table and the way back again. Ah, the week here man's a wall. And ah, the week he bade your lean. Ah, the time you're waiting for. The minute that he's coming him. Ye can what why he has to work. Ye can do what he has to keep. And yet it makes ye angry when you see him just come him to sleep. They're never at home. They're just like lodgers. They're just home a weekend. Home on Saturday and away back on Monday again. And it's getting worse for that. They're never at home. They used to be at Yarmouth, and then they were home all winter and start the summer fishing. And then Yarmouth again. But no, it's steady on all the year round. Through the months and through the years, while you're bringing up the bins, your man's a water here and there Following the shores of oh, hens And when he's back there's nets to men You've maybe got a score or two And when they're done he'll rise and say Wife it's time I was a war. It's been our life mining nets. Our life. Got that heron and mining nets. If I was to live my life again, I would never marry a fisherman. I would not. It's a good job you'd not come in front of you. We used to sing a song, if I would be a fisherman's wife. <laughs> The game with the creel, the scrubber than the knife. A full fireside and a revel bed and a water the muscles in the morning. Work and wait and dream your weird Then your faith and heaven sails And oft times lie a walk at night in fear and dread of winter gales. And men man work to earn their breed, and men man sweat to gain their fee. And fishermen will I gang out as long as fish swim in the sea. We are diesel engines, nylon nets, RT and deck for sounder sets, and a crew of ten to toil and sweat for the water fish for the herring. There is the basic instinct in man that he's a hunter. I mean, once man didn't even till the ground, he just hunted. And I suppose fishing lets that out, doesn't it? You satisfy yourself that uh, you've hunted for your fish and you've caught him. I don't believe that man was born to be a tiller of the soil. He's an animal the same as all other animals, and like the big fish in the sea, he'll have done the smaller ones, and, and, and that's just it. We're nets 
and gear were faring. On the wild and wasteful ocean It's there on the deep That we harvest and reap Poor breed As we hunt the bonny shows of heron we reap without sowing, don't we? But we do it in a damn stupid way that, that we don't get half the benefit we might. You see. If we could learn how to reap this wild harvest properly, that would take us 50 years to do that. But eventually, as we probably shall have to cultivate the seed. Night and day, the sea we're daring. Come wind or come or winter gale Sweating or cold, growing up, growing old or dying While we're hunting for the shoals of heron I don't know, fishing seems to do something to you you know, that swagger that any sailor gets when he comes ashore, that's a sort of superiority, isn't it? Now, that's the thing about going to sea. The things ashore don't seem big enough to, to worry about. Hey, there, there you are. You've got everything your own. There's no pleasure like getting free of the harbour and all the trammels of the shore. You say, now, where are we going? We can go where we like. We've got the whole sea. Livelihood, you see. Proud. You was proud that you was fisher. You was fisher bred and born. Never ashamed of being fisher. Oh, no. Come all you gallant fishermen that sail the stormy sea. The whole year round on the fishing grounds of the northern minch and the Norway deeps and the banks and knolls of the North Sea holes where the herring shoals are found. Singing the fishing was the work of Ewan McCall and Charles Parker with music direction by Peggy Seeger.